Welcome back to the Ethan Fabs YouTube channel where the lighting is terrible, the editing's even worse, and the welds are decent. Today, we are working on the steering. Okay, this is probably gonna be very difficult to see, but this is the front corner of the cooler, as you can see, and these are the wheel and hub assembly, as you can see. So, this thing gets welded to the frame right here. It stays in place as this gets turned. So this is going to be welded on here so that it can steer like this, right? Okay, now, I could have just like welded it on right there, I guess. Like welded it on right there and then put like a, a 45 coming up here because if I just did a little weld there, that would not be strong enough. That would break right off. Now the reason I can't do that is because when I turn the wheel, it hits the cooler. So that's that would be all the steering I have. So I have to jet it out further so that I have more steering angle. I learned that from my last cooler. So I made this little bar that goes on top. I had to do this with the last one as well. So I measured it. I'm not sure if I measured correctly, but I made this bar longer on both ends so it can jet out a bit to give us some extra steering. Now it's still not even enough room to weld. Um, I was trying to make it so that right before it hits, the, right before the tire hits the cooler, it, the steering would actually bottom out. Meaning that on the other spindle setup, when this tire came up and almost whacked the plastic, this little thing, this little tie rod, and that's not, this isn't a tie rod, but the spindle, I guess, this little spindle, would bottom out against this so that I wouldn't have to put in a stop. What I'm gonna do when I weld these on is actually tilt them back a little bit. That's gonna give you better steering because if you think about it, if you have your spindle straight up and down like this, when you turn even a little bit, your wheel is gonna wanna boom! It's gonna wanna turn really quickly. It's just gonna, gonna wanna be sucked in. So that's why you have to tilt it back just a little bit and that'll give you better steering. So this might, this is probably the hardest part of the build but um, once I get all this stuff welded, it's pretty much smooth sailing from here. So let's get started. Okay, filming's hard. Sometimes you just wanna come out and get a whole bunch of stuff done without filming and that's kinda what happened. Uh, so I've made a little bit of progress since you last saw this. So the system that I had, I didn't like. I didn't like just another bar going across here so let me turn the light up. I added some spacers right there. And then as, as you can see, a bar that goes across that welds onto these and then made two towers that come up here and then this steel collar. Now, on my dew cooler is this material with this pipe going into it. So it's like metal on metal, which is not great for wear. I mean, it doesn't really matter because it's just steering, but there is this miracle material called Nihilatron. This is some kind of plastic. You could, you could rub, you could put a, well, you couldn't put a grinder on it. It doesn't wear. It melts, but it doesn't wear. So this will last forever on here. So what I did was I made a one and a quarter steel collar or yeah, one and a quarter steel sleeve, sleeve, that's the word I'm looking for. And then, oops, sorry. And then I made the OD of the Nylatron one and a quarter so that it can be hammered down into it. Now I actually made it too long, so I'll have to cut that. And so this uh, ring right here, uh, snap ring, that's what I'm looking for. That makes it so that when you're driving and you need to like rearrange, you can grab onto your handlebars and lift up like that and it's the same down here. So that'll make it so you can lift it up. That's not the way it is on mine. It's actually kind of a pain. So this is where I'm at. Um, I hate this system. I hate how inefficient it is. It's really rough on material. So I have a new system that I'm gonna make with uh, my cooler cart plans, which I hope to be, ma be making here soon. Okay, it's not focusing very well, but this is what a tie rod looks like. So. There's one end and there's the other. Now, the reason that these tie rods are nice is because these are threaded on both ends. I'll show you that in a second. But here's how it works. This is a left-hand thread and this is a right-hand thread. Now, if I twist it like this, you can actually, it's okay, well this five script system's working great. You can actually see that it's like sucking the wheel in. So then you have very fine adjustability. So when I do this, it pushes the whole system out, and when I do this, it pulls everything in. So that way you can get very fine adjustability without completely taking it apart. That's why it's left hand here and right hand here. Now, problem is, if I get this wheel straight and, oops, I gotta unvice grip this. Okay, so if I get this wheel 
straight-ish and this one straight-ish. As you can see, I got the wrong measurement because these should, both of these holes should line up with each other, so I'm gonna need to cut these. So um, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to unscrew these and then put them both at like halfway of their thread travel. And then, which is, if this, if this makes sense, and it makes sense. If it doesn't, it doesn't. But um, if I, so I, I'll, I'll unscrew this to half of like the thread length on either of these. And then I will cut however much I need to take off, off of here, and then I'll weld them back together, so. Okay, so I went to Harbor Freight yesterday. I was going to buy a uh, new Predator 212 for the new cooler, and um, I couldn't decide if I wanted to get the Performance one, the Ghost, or just get the old one. It's 40 bucks more for the Performance Ghost. And then I was like, you know what? How about I put the engine from my first cooler onto the new cooler and then put the ghost engine on my old cooler. So that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to bring the new cooler over here, rip the engine off and then start fabbing up the engine mounts for this. So yeah. All right. We're in my parent, my grandparents garage right now. This is where it's been sitting throughout the winter and it's been used as a cardboard box stand. That's uh, that's just great. So let's get it out of here. I went to Harbor Freight yesterday to get some vice grips and the nice lady gave me a coupon because I'm a part of the Inside Track, track Club. I'm so bougie. And I can get my engine for 30% off. That's so freaking cool that I actually caught the coupon. Okay, let's get this one ripped off and then I'm going in as soon as I can to get that one. Alrighty, the engine is taken off. Uh, don't mind this little guy. He's uh, he, he's kind of stuck in there. He's kind of seized right there. I mean, look, this is one of my first builds right here, so it's not exactly perfect. Welds are atrocious. This whole system is atrocious, but hey, it works great. Here's the engine. It's not exactly clean, but um, I will try to get all those little grass shards in there, out of there. Uh, clean it out and then start fabbing up the rear section to mount it on so yeah All right, so I just picked up this uh, Predator 224 so this is like the slightly upgraded version of the 212 uh, I've seen some really good reviews on it So I figured I'd pick it up It's only like 30 bucks more and even cheaper than that if you have the inside track club of which I do so now I got to unwrap it and then slap it on that thing which should be pretty direct I mean they're pretty much the same engine and then uh rock on Okay, so the first order of business is to adapt these wires, the positive and negative wires, to these ones that I already have right here. That just goes to the front to a kill switch up there. And then I'll actually take this switch off and then put it on the new cooler and then hook that up to this system. So I'll kind of be doing a bit of a juggling here. And then after that, take off the old throttle system. See how this thing works? Yeah. So. Take that off and then put the throttle cable through here just like the old one and then we should be rocking. So I don't, oh, 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 and I need to turn, I need to turn this thing this way so that I can pull up on the starter and not do this. So yeah, that's what I'm doing real quick. Engine mounts are pretty basic. All you have to do is make sure that the uh, plate is lined up with the axle. Otherwise you'll break a chain and wear a chain. So um, I took the cooler itself off so I could get, uh, sorry, so I could get this bar on right here. So I've got these two mounts, these two towers right here, and then I'm going to make take that same tubing and cut it at like a 45 or something and then bring it up right here and then weld it right there. So that's the plan right now. So it's gonna be a lot of angles, but uh, that's okay. So that's where we're at. Sorry, I've been forgetting to film. Uh, so I was gonna have it like this. <laughs> and then it was, <laughs> yeah, I cut it too short. So it was gonna go from here down to there, but I just, uh, yeah, I got the measurements wrong. It's really hard to cut angles. I really need to take a class on it or something so I can understand it. But 
Uh, yeah, that didn't turn out right. So here's what I'm gonna do. This is going right there. And then this is gonna go right there. Just like that. And there's gonna be some room to fill some weld, but um, that's okay. Okay, so this is the system I ended up going with. So I've just got one rod coming down. It's gonna be enough. And oh my goodness, is the fitment horrendous. Um, yeah, that fitment, and then you're gonna hate this, but. I mean, I just, ugh. it'll weld and it'll hold, but I just don't understand how angles like that work. I need to take a few geometry classes. I mean, I thought I could wing it. Okay, now I'm gonna put the engine on, bolt it on, and then see how much it can move back and forth. Because as you can see, this piece of square that I put right here is stopping me from having full adjustability. So uh, yeah, let's do that. All right, I'm liking the way this is looking. I've got a decent amount of adjustability. Sorry it's so hard to see with the sun. And then, now I need to cut the CVT guard so I have a change. Okay, so I got the cover off, and then I realized that I can take this like down to here. Like I can bring it down actually quite a ways so that I don't have such a long chain. And that's what the setup is on my cooler. Um, it's you just bring it right down close to it. And then you've got a, hello. And then you've got a super short chain that like doesn't wobble and stuff. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to take this off and then uh, take these bolts out. See those bolts right there? Take those out and then, uh, yeah, move it this way. So, yep. So uh, this is the sprocket that I bought. So it's an aluminum sprocket with a hub on it. This, this thing was a pain. On my old cooler, it's just a uh, one inch bore sprocket with, or a one inch bore hub with a sprocket on it. And it's all one piece. It's, it's like, it's not a hub and a sprocket. Um, but this one, I couldn't find anything else. So I got this and then this thing, and I was planning on just drilling my own holes and I tried to, uh, but it didn't work. So I had my shop buddy who runs the CNC machine uh, drill these whole four holes for me. And so that should work. Okay, so uh, this is fitting now. Um, so I brought it down a little bit. Couldn't make it much more than that because it's gonna hit the engine right here. So um, let's see, I had to cut that, had to grind that, had to grind this, and I had to cut the dipstick off. Usually have to do that with these. So now uh, I need to order a chain. I have a few links, but not enough to reach here. So uh, that should work really well. So I'm gonna order that and then in the meantime, I'm gonna work on steering. Okay, so like an idiot, I fabricated this whole front steering section as temporary. When I put like these dumb spacers on here, I was like, oh, I'm just gonna see if it fits and then uh, and then I'll be done. Well, it took me forever to get this nylon made and all this stuff made that then this kind of became permanent because I don't want really to fix it anymore. So now I have to make sure that everything is square with the rear axles. And if it isn't, then I have to rip it back off and redo it, which I really don't want to do. Okay, so I've yet to mount the brake caliper. Um, I, I know what I need to do. I just need to buy the stuff. Um, I gotta get this thing finished. I gotta weld it up. I gotta get as much done as I can right now. I've got so much other better stuff to work on. So I'm gonna take the engine off and make sure that the um, motor plate is straight and then burn that on. Just burn everything on. There's a handful of things I need to mount up that need to be welded on, but I don't know. I gotta make progress on this thing, so yep.
Okay, so I am now mounting the foot pegs. Here's one. Okay, so I'm going to put this bracket. See how it's like a C channel almost? So, whoa. So I'm going to put this inside there. And then now I will drill that out to the size of this because this is supposed to go in here like that and then a snap ring goes on the end of that. So that's just the way it is stock. Um, this is off from like Kawasaki or something like that. So um, that's what I'm doing right now. Also, I mounted the brake caliper. You can't see it mounted, but this is the mounting system. It looks horrendous right now. Um, I'm going to cut, cut, and then weld it in as well as weld that in. But man, it's just such a pain to weld in. It, the, the way the the bracket is, it just makes it so difficult to try to mount up. But you know, it is what it is. Okay, I need to weld this thing on now. I got the top part welded up as you can see right there. Now I need to weld that and that. Well, I'm gonna have to end the video there. Um, that was actually going to be a really, really big video, like pretty much two videos in one, but I decided to cut it in half and then post the other part uh, later so that I have more videos to post because as you know, I have a large gap in between uploading. So uh, yeah, that video should be coming out uh, pretty soon and I hope you enjoyed this one. There's gonna be lots of good information in the next one. And uh, yeah, I hope you learned something. Have a good one, guys.